Good morning. Welcome to Calvary Chapel. And I'd just like to invite you in in the name of Jesus. And so this morning, we're going to be jumping right into a topic that is exciting, uh, especially just after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem uh, until they were endued with power from on high. So that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. And the text, at least to start with, uh, will be several places, but just to start with, it will be in the book of Acts chapter 1, and we will be starting with uh, verses 4 and 5. And so as we look at the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So let us pray right now. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you that you're present in our lives, that you want to use us, Lord, in your kingdom. You want us to be those that are given over to you, that are holy, Lord. So we ask that you would help us, God, in, uh, in your scriptures, Lord God, in our growth in you and understanding your will for our lives, Lord God. As we look at this opportunity, Lord God, as we look at this uh, area of scripture, that we might uh, glean these things from it that, that you would have us uh, to be all about, Lord, as we see that uh, you were interested in the disciples and the apostles uh, being baptized in the Holy Spirit and dude with power from on high, Lord. So we want to look at that and see what it means for us today, God. So we just ask your help as we look to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, as we look at uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it, it sounds like uh, something that is new in the book of Acts, but actually it is not. Uh, we can look at the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, for instance, uh, as uh, we look at um, the different places in Scripture where Jesus uh, was uh, telling the disciples that uh, you will be baptized, well, actually, John the Baptist was telling the disciples that they uh, uh, were going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so uh, here we see Jesus saying to them in Luke chapter 24, uh, verse 49, the promise of my Father upon you. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry or wait in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. So here is uh, some clear evidence that uh, there is this uh, fact that the Holy Spirit has come upon them. And uh, also, uh, as we look in different uh, areas of Scripture, uh, we see the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but it's in different names also. There are several different names that is used for this particular uh, experience or work or submersion in the, the Spirit of God. But uh, here in Acts chapter 2, verse uh, 4, it says, you, And they will, were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. In Acts chapter 11, verse 15 and 16, uh, it says, uh, tells us that, and they began to speak, uh, to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. So uh, here is Peter telling the story of what happened to Cornelius back in the prior chapter of chapter 10, verses uh, 44 and 45, and I think 47 and 48, something like that. And so the Holy Spirit fell upon them, and the same thing in Acts chapter eleven sixteen, 16, uh, he says that he remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so uh, we see that uh, they were already uh, aware of these uh, experiences that they were going to be having, being filled with the Spirit or being baptized by the Spirit of God. And so uh, the apostles or the disciples after 
the book of Acts. After they were uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit, we see that this story in Acts is a, a story of the disciples and the fact that they are really shining for the Lord, that they changed amazingly. We see that Peter, when he uh, gave his uh, amazing uh, sermon in Acts chapter 2, we see Peter and John uh, as they were going to the gate beautiful and this lame man was there, that something that took place in their lives that had happened, that they had not seen before, that they had not done before, that they were not aware of the things going on before. And so Jesus uh, had empowered them. They were baptized by the Holy Spirit. And here they have this amazing change uh, in their lives. And so we want to have that kind of change in our lives. So as, uh, as we look at uh, uh, the Lord and his desire for his disciples, he was always preparing them. He was teaching them. And he would say to them uh, that they were going to be uh, baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so here uh, we see that God had something for them, that the Lord had uh, obviously the Word of God. We see the, the resources that God has for us. And number one, his, his resource is obviously the Word of God, that we need to grow and know uh, what God is doing and who the Lord is. Where the Word of God tells us all about that. And he, uh, the Word tells us that uh, God expects certain things, what He expects from us, but also the direction and purpose and plan. He unveils these plans. He unveils these things to us. And also we see uh, some other uh, resource, obviously, is prayer, that we can seek the Lord in prayer, and we need to be in prayer. So prayer is very important. The Word of God is very important, that we need to grow in uh, the kingdom in that way. Also, we see the Holy Spirit, and he gives us the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit, uh, as we look in the scriptures, that there are Obviously, different uh, things that the Holy Spirit does in our lives. In chapter uh, 14 of the book of uh, John, it tells us that the Holy Spirit will be in us. He, we see that the Holy Spirit is with us, and so the Holy Spirit is with us all around. And obviously, he draws people to himself like you and me before we knew Christ as our Lord and Savior. If you see uh, people that are not born again, the Holy Spirit is working in their lives to bring them to a place of repentance, uh, that they may seek the Lord, that they may have a relationship with the living God. And so that's happened to each one of us. It happened to me and all those who uh, know Christ as their Lord and Savior. But this is a different uh, work that is taking place. In chapter uh, 14 of, of John, it tells us that the Holy Spirit will be, uh, is with you, and then he will be in you in uh, those areas of Scripture. However, uh, in Acts chapter, in Acts chapter 1, and what we're speaking of here is a different experience that is taking place. And that experience is known as, uh, well, it's known for different names, as I mentioned, but uh, it is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is the filling of the Holy Spirit. And so I, I guess we could maybe put uh, a label on it initially. It may be the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Initially, it, it is that. But later on, perhaps it's called the filling of the Holy Spirit. That seems to be what takes place in the scriptures. And so more in the idea of, of being submersed in the Holy Spirit 
as uh, we look at it in the different areas of Scripture. And so as uh, these uh, areas of Scripture uh, come to mind, we want to uh, go through some areas and give an encouragement uh, for just that. For instance, Zacharias, when he was, uh, when Jesus was being born, uh, it tells us that Zacharias was filled with the Spirit. So it's not something new even uh, in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, uh, also it says Samson uh, was, had the Spirit come upon him. It even said Saul, the king, had the Spirit come upon him, and he prophesied. So this is not something new to the New Testament uh, or the book of Acts, but these kind of works of the Spirit have been taking place. In fact, even Simeon, during the birth of Jesus, as Jesus was taken to, uh, when Jesus was a baby, he was taken to the temple, and uh, Sim uh, Simeon, uh, came in to see Jesus because it had been prophesied that he would see the Lord's Christ before he departed. And so it says the Holy Spirit was upon him, using that uh, idea of the what uh, is known as the epi or epi experience uh, in uh, the fact that the Lord came or the Holy Spirit came up on them during that uh, particular time. So uh, here is this idea uh, of Jesus baptizing with the Holy Spirit or in the Holy Spirit and, and these kind of things. Uh, as we have more of a, an understanding in the different areas of Scripture, uh, back in the book of Acts, uh, in verse uh, in verse uh, 5, uh, it tells us that, or let's read 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. Now, uh, this is an interesting statement if we, if we look at it. Uh, because it gives us an understanding that they are supposed to know something here. That they're supposed to know, first of all, that when the Spirit comes upon them, they're supposed to know that there is something going on uh, here. That he, and Jesus is telling them it's going to be a particular time. But that time and the things that are going on is something that you can and will know. And so he says that very, uh, very directly to uh, the disciples. And, and by the way, it's the disciples that it's not just the apostles that have the Spirit come upon them. But it's, it's the disciples that have the Spirit come upon them. So we'll uh, talk more about that as we get into, uh, into those areas. But first of all, Jesus, uh, well, the disciples, when they met in this place in Acts chapter 4 and 5, they actually Acts chapter 1 uh, and 2, we look at them in, in the sense that they were, or seem to be saved men. Uh, in John chapter 15, verse 3, uh, it tells us that you are already clean because the word which I have spoken to you. And also in John chapter 13, verse 10, as you remember, uh, Jesus, when he had his disciples, including Judas Iscariot, uh, there he said to them, uh, he who bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. So, recognizing the fact that Judas was in that place and that he was not a saved man. But I think uh, more than those scriptures, uh, this next scripture 
kind of just really puts it right there. Uh, in John chapter 20, verse 22, he says, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. So I, I think it seems to be pretty conclusive that these men were saved men. Uh, I guess when Jesus says, Receive the Spirit, you receive the Spirit. So uh, they are born-again believers at that particular time. And what, constitute, what constitutes someone who is born again? Someone who has received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. As he mentioned, uh, you're clean because the word I have spoken to you and the idea that they did receive the Spirit. So we're, we're talking about a different experience here as we look at uh, Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. And so, as we look at uh, this, uh, the promise of the Father is upon you, tarry and wait for it. So, they were actually, uh, they were, they were certainly waiting for that to take place. They went to, uh, they were in Jerusalem, they were waiting 10 days, and then the Spirit of God is coming upon them. Uh, in in uh, Acts uh, chapter uh, 2, but let's not get there yet, <clears throat> because in Acts chapter 1, verse 5, uh, it tells us that, For John truly baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So the baptism with the Holy Spirit, again, mentioned here in Luke uh, gospel, John answered, saying to them, Indeed, baptiz uh, I baptized you indeed with water, one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And fire. So here is uh, the context of these individuals waiting for the Lord uh, in Acts chapter 1. And also, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as we look at the different uh, ways in which that's expressed, baptism of the Holy Spirit with fire, also in Matthew, it's mentioned seven different times in that way in the Gospels. And so here we come to this particular place, uh, and we see this mentioned also in Mark chapter 1, verse 10. As Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. So what do we say about that? Not only are the disciples being baptized but, but, uh, with the Holy Spirit, but we also uh, see that very same thing going on and same experience with Jesus Christ as he was baptized by the Spirit of God. He was baptized, if you remember, uh, by John, uh, uh, John the Baptist, and he went down into the water. When he came out of the water, what happened to him? The Spirit of God fell upon him. Now, it's interesting that Jesus didn't start his ministry until after that takes place. And we can see and follow uh, that idea along in the, the book of Acts and uh, in Acts chapter, Acts chapter uh, well, I'm going to start with verse uh, 38 of chapter 10, but then we're going to be in Luke uh, after that. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, uh, he's making this statement, and you shall know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were uh, oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And so Peter here is at the house of Cornelius talking about what happened with Jesus Christ. And you notice that uh, he, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Gee, that sounds familiar. That sounds like something is going on here in the book of Acts. So the same, the same thing uh, is taking place. 
And I need all the power from God that I can get. I need all that God has for me. I don't want to stop short. And I don't want to be in disbelief that God does these things to individuals today. Because it's going to go on to tell us that very thing. So uh, about the, the Jesus uh, being baptized in Luke chapter 4 verse 1. Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, this is after his baptism, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. This is just after Jesus was baptized and baptized by the Spirit. The Spirit came upon him. If you don't like the idea of baptism of the Holy Spirit, the idea of the Spirit was on him. However you like it, then, you know, the idea is the Spirit came upon Jesus and Jesus went into the wilderness and he was under, uh, he was under the idea of being tempted by Satan, uh, by the enemy. And then in verse uh, 14, and Jesus returned to Galilee, filled with the Holy Spirit, Spirit's power, reports about him spread quickly through the whole region. In verse 18 of Luke chapter 4, it says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the captives uh, that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free. So here is Jesus uh, coming up from the water, going out to be tempted uh, by Satan for 40 days. He's coming back to uh, Jerusalem or coming back to Galilee. And when he returns, he's filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's power, and so, therefore, we see that he proclaims here in verse 18 of Luke chapter 4, the Spirit of God is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim uh, to the captives, they'll be released. And so, here is the Lord in his ministry and starting his earthly ministry. Now, as we look at what's going on in the book of Acts, we see that same thing going on. We see that the, the guys here, uh, well, let's, let's read this. Let's, I mean, it is terribly exciting. Uh, so let's read uh, what is taking place. Now, first of all, the result of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What is that all about? And so in verse uh, 8 of uh, Acts chapter 1, it tells us, you shall receive power, it says, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. So that's what's going on. What will you receive when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit? Well, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. What will you receive? Well, what's the result of that? The result is the fact that you are endued with power from on high. And that speaks exactly of what Jesus said would happen uh, when the promise of the Father was up on him. Terry, and you'll be endued with power from on high. Well, that's what's going on when the Holy Spirit comes upon individuals. And so here is uh, that, very, that very thing happening. And so, as we switch to chapter 2 uh, in uh, Acts, we see that what's, what's taking place here. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, in verse 1, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, and uh, then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues uh, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So here is 
another instance where uh, the Holy Spirit comes upon these guys and the very thing that was said in chapter 1 comes to fruition in chapter 2 where the power of God is coming upon these individuals. The place was shaken. And what happened there? Well, they received uh, tongues. And so does everyone receive tongues when the Holy Spirit comes upon them? Obviously not. Uh, I'll just refer you to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, I think verse 20. Do all speak in tongues? Do all prophesy? Do all, you know, it goes through a whole list. And no is the obvious answer to those questions that Paul is posing in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So it's not the sign that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. But what is? The sign that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit is power uh, to be of service to the Lord. Every time that it shows someone baptized in the Holy Spirit, there is service to them. The, the, the Lord uses them in some sort of service. So what uh, an amazing uh, thing that is. It's, it's kind of like he's preparing us for a work that he wants us to do. So, uh, you know, it's interesting. I was reading some different thoughts uh, about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, of course, there's a bunch of folks out there that uh, don't believe in uh, the fact that the baptism of the Holy Spirit and, and all that is for today. Uh, and so they can... Obviously, I'm not going to, to go into any of that <laughs> this morning. But uh, the idea was, uh, and one argument that the individual had uh, was the fact that it's not, you know, you don't have any super saints. There's no idea of some people get this great power and, and uh, the separation of different people. And uh, that's not what the scriptures tell us. The scriptures tell us that anyone who wills can be filled with the Spirit. Anyone who wants to be filled with the Spirit can be filled with the Spirit of God. So we know that it's not just set apart for a few, but it is actually for everyone. So remember that it is for you. It's not just for a privileged few. It's not just for uh, the apostles or disciples at that time. It is for everyone because that's the extent that God hands, uh, hands it out to each person, whoever wills. And so Luke chapter 11 tells us that very thing, whoever wills, whoever ask can be filled with the Holy Spirit. So he says, ask. And so I don't want to leave you hanging on how to be filled with the Spirit. Uh, and so, anyway, as, let's go on to uh, Acts chapter uh, 2, verse 16. But this is, uh, was spoken by the prophet Joel. And so we see the, the very fact that this was prophesied to come. The Holy Spirit coming down was prophesied to come. And uh, in verse uh, 33 of, uh, of Acts chapter 2, it tells us, Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father, the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. So, you know, that's, that statement stopped me for a moment because uh, the, the folks that I w was reading uh, that I mentioned uh, had said that, well, it's just the Holy Spirit coming in you and that's, uh, that's all there is. I mean, that's a lot. That's power. However, it's not all there is. But look at what it says here in verse 33. He says, he poured out this which you now see and hear. You don't get that when, you're, when you ask Jesus into your heart. That's a different experience going on. The Holy Spirit comes in, but you don't see and hear. And so this is a different uh, context of what is taking place here. In verse 39, 38, pardon me. Uh, it, then Peter said to them, Repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, um, just a very quick uh, um, thing here. Um, 
in the New Living Translation, it puts it a little bit different. Because in verse 38, he says, Repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of uh, Jesus for the remission of sins. Saved. But the New uh, Living Translation puts this, and it can be added here, or it can be uh, put this way. Instead of, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, it says, then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so, being saved, then receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that will come upon them. The context of what they've been, of what uh, uh, Peter's talking about already. And then, uh, very quickly, you go to Acts chapter 3. That's an amazing demonstration. I don't want to really get into that because we're going to stop here uh, real quick. The idea of the result of these people, of our disciples, of our apostles. Before Jesus, do you remember before Jesus was, was crucified and killed? Do you remember what happened? What happened was these guys were saying, who's the greatest? These guys didn't have any power. They waited for Jesus to do everything. But now what do they do? There's a man walking by, and what's he doing? He's begging for money. Now, Peter and John are walking by this guy. Before, I am sure, they would have just ignored who he was. But see, they have been baptized and empowered by the living God. They saw things differently. They heard things differently. And now they're ready to face the difficulties and problems that are set before them. And what did they do? They grabbed him by the hand and pulled him up and said, silver and gold I don't have, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. What a difference that is that we can see uh, the Spirit of God working in these uh, individuals so amazingly. So in verse 16 of chapter 3 of the book of Acts, it says, And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Wow, what an amazing Amazing story that is. And so Peter goes on in verse 19, Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Wow. So that's the answer. That's the answer to this, to this world today. Repent, he says, of these things. Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be forgiven, that times of refreshing may come to you. And that is the excitement that, that each one of us can have today. If you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, he, Peter tells us right here what to do. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. What times of refreshing? Repent of your sins so that you can be converted. And the times of refreshing will come to each one of us. What a beautiful time to do that now. What a time to get to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you've just accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, take your Bible and read it and get to know the Lord. Because that's the way we get to know God's will, God's purpose, God's plan, and a new relationship with a living God. So God bless you. I pray that you would... Uh, know Jesus. If you know Jesus, I pray that you'd be baptized in the Holy Spirit, that times of refreshing will come uh, to you, that strength and power will come into your life, that you can serve the Lord uh, in power. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you would bless uh, each one, Lord God, by your Spirit, by your power. And Lord, I pray that there would be time of refreshing for each one. Thank you, God. 
that you're powerful, that you're present, Lord God, that you have a plan for each person's life today. God, we just so thank you for the way that you demonstrate a change and a change in lives, Lord God, that you just completely uh, upset their, their whole world and brought them to a place of purpose. Thank you, God, for that. In Jesus' name.